Today, I'm going to show you how to make this liquid gold. Finding a good clean starter culture of isocrisis is very important. It's easily contaminated, so a strict sterilization process is very important if you want to grow more of it. If you want to get the cleanest possible starter culture, you can order from colleges or universities, but they're going to be super expensive and I'm I'm talking about, you know, hundreds of dollars for, you know, 16 ounces or, you know, even less. So instead, you know, we just buy from each other, we buy from hobbyists, uh, you know, just to save money. I always look under my microscope here whenever I get a new culture just to kind of see what I'm working with and to see, you know, if the phytoplankton is actually worth culturing. If it's too contaminated, you know, I'm, I'm just going to dose it to my tank and that's it. I'm not even going to try to culture it because it's going to be too much of a hassle to culture. So keep that in mind whenever you're buying isocrisis phytoplankton. You want to get a good quality starter culture that's not very contaminated. For my culturing containers, I like to use glass simply because I can sterilize them easier. You can also use HDPE plastic, such as the type of plastic found at a homebrew store. And you can also use the disposable poly bags like the ones used in the Phytal Tank by Poseidon Reef, Poseidon Reef Systems. But I just like to use these little Erlenmeyer flasks. They're easy to sterilize and pretty easy to work with. We technically aren't sterilizing unless we use an autoclave or a pressure cooker at the least. And since this video is aimed at hobbyists like myself, we're just going to sterilize our water by boiling it. Now that I rinsed it out with the hot tap water, I'm just going to add a little bit of my bleach here. Alright, so now I'm just going to set a timer for five minutes. And make sure not to get any of this on you because if you get it on your clothes, it's going to leave, you know, white marks or pink marks. So just kind of be careful of that. Be aware of that. All right. Now that that's done, let's just pour the bleach down the drain. Now, just going to use my distilled water here and just kind of swish it around and you know, we want to try to get as much bleach off the glass as we can. Give it a smell. I can still smell bleach. So just keep on doing it until you no longer smell bleach. Okay, I don't smell bleach anymore. So this one's good. Now what we want to do is cap this with some foil so no contaminants get into the jar. I'm just gonna put it on there like that. And so I'm gonna clean this one and I'll come back and then we'll fill these up with salt water. Now that these are sterilized to the best of our ability, let's go ahead and add some salt water in them. Now what I do is I use a clean Solo cup. It's fresh out of the package, never been used. And I go to my mixing container here of salt water, and I'm just going to add in some salt water. And I'm going to fill these up to the 400 mil mark. Now, we're going to go boil the salt water. I'm gonna let this boil, and then we'll check back on it once it starts boiling. All right, listen up. If you need help, and you know who I'm talking to, if you need help with anything related to phytoplankton or copepods or pretty much anything reef related, tap the little join button or click it to join my membership and you know we can set up a one-on-one -on -one time session where either I can text you or we can have a video chat uh, you know it's your choice whatever you want to pick whatever tier you want to pick 
whether you're lost or this is your first time growing phytoplankton and you need advice, and especially isocrisis phytoplankton like in this video, super difficult for the first time you know, person trying to culture. You know, or maybe you're a fish store just trying to learn a little bit how to culture phytoplankton or copepods, I'm your guy. And I didn't start this membership because I need the money or anything because obviously I don't. Well, I'm sitting on a fat stack of gold here. But uh, honestly, you know, I'm already helping you guys out anyways. So why not go ahead and put a membership so you can get one-on-one -on -one time with me if you need it. You know what I mean? Just look in the comment section of this video. Now, give it a second because I'm not going to have 100,000 comments instantly. You know, I'm not that big of a channel. But just give it a second. Look down in the comments below from this video. You'll see everybody who I'm helping. Or any of my other videos. But yeah. If you don't want to join, hey, no sweat. I'll continue to help everybody in the comments that I can or on Facebook that message me. So yeah, join if you want to. Back to the regular scheduled video. Now that the water has started boiling, I just set a timer for five minutes on my phone. And then once that's up, I'll go ahead and just cut off my stove. And that'll be good. The water will be sterilized. Now that our water has cooled down to room temperature, we can go ahead and add the algae to the water. So let's just remove the cap here. And this is some um, isocrisis from a previous batch that I ran. And for this 500 milliliter flask, I normally start out with 400 milliliters of water, but some of it boiled off. So I'm just going to top off all the way to 500 mils with the rest of this algae. So let's pour that in here. There we go. And we need to add our food. So I get clean pipette here. Kind of mix up the F2 a little bit. And then for this amount, I'm just going to use two mils. That's a little on the heavy side, but I'd rather have a little bit extra than not enough so it can go for the full seven days. All right, then we'll just put our full cap back on. Just give it a little swirl, mix everything up, there we go. Now, if you were doing this for a gallon amount, I would go ahead and add a full 16 ounce bottle of isocrisis to your one gallon container. And I would also add three mils of F2 to that one gallon container. For the lighting, I use this Mars Hydro TS-1000 set up in a grow tent here. Normally I would have my tropical houseplants in here, but I've dedicated this grow tent to growing phytoplankton. I know it's kind of washed out now, but I've got to adjust the white balance. You could also use T5s if you want to. I just choose to use this LED light panel because it's a little easier to use and costs less money than running a T5. Now let's get this culture going. I'm just going to remove the cap. I've got brand new rigid airline tubing and a piece of airline. I'm going to just stick this in here. And I add some cotton swabs just to hold it in place. There we go. Hook it up to the air pump here. Alright, let me plug it in. Now, I'll let this run for seven days, and I take a picture every day to see how dark it's getting each day. And then once I see that it's no longer getting dark, I'll go ahead and harvest the phytoplankton. So, I'm going to go ahead and cut to an update right here on day seven. And then I'll show you how I harvest the phytoplankton. It's been seven days now, and we ran into a little bit of a hiccup. So, let's open the tent and see what the algae looks like. The algae isn't a brown color like, you know, the typical isocrisis phytoplankton. It's a green color, so that tells me that our isocrisis is contaminated. Now, you shouldn't really be alarmed because from what I've read and what I've watched, there's no isocrisis culture out there that's not contaminated. You're going to have a contaminated culture. What we do is 
you sterilize your glass, you sterilize your water the best you can, and you just hope that the contaminants and the phytoplankton, they don't come out and, you know, look like this. So let's take a look at this under the microscope and see what's under there. Today, we're just going to be using the smaller M scope. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to use this, but I pretty much use this every day for everything I need to use and if I really want to get some higher detailed quality images or videos I'll go ahead and use the Swift marker scope. Alright so we've got our newly washed slide, slide cover, a clean pipette and our phytoplankton so let's take a sample here. So here's what the sample looks like under 40 times magnification. Most of these cells appear to be nanochloropsis from my best guess. There are a couple in here that are moving and I would guess that those are probably some isocrisis cells. They all look like they're moving because they're just flowing with the water but you'll see some that are kind of going against the, the grain of all the other ones. Yeah, this is pretty much why our culture looks green because it's full of these nanochloropsis cells. And that's why it's very important to sterilize everything to the best of your ability. So it's been another seven days and after the mishap with the green algae that you saw last week or in a previous clip here, our isocrisis is ready to harvest. So let's go ahead and harvest the phytoplankton. What I like to do is use just a clear plastic container so I purchased several of these and I got plenty extra just for this occasion right here. I'll literally take the phytoplankton and pour it in here without spilling it. There we go. Oop, got a little bit on there, but anyways, that's what I like to do. Uh, put it in a bottle just like that and then I will keep it on my kitchen counter that way every time I walk by the kitchen I'll just kind of turn it upside down and give it a little stir you don't want to sit there and just shake the hell out of it because it could damage some of the cells in there and you could kill your phytoplankton so just gently turn it up and down As you can see, culturing isocrisis is not as easy as it seems. It's not difficult, but it's also it's not the easiest. I've learned a lot from this book here, the Plankton Culture Manual. I'll go ahead and link to that below in the description if you want to pick that up and check it out. It's a pretty easy manual to use. They cover all sorts of things like how to culture phytoplankton, copepods, brine shrimp. Just There's a plethora of things in there that you can check out in this book. Also, check out the Facebook group called How to Culture Live Food for Aquariums. I'll link that as well. A few tips that I can give you for successfully culturing isocrisis is, you know, I only culture isocrisis by itself. You may see those beautiful pictures of everybody has their phytoplankton lined up, the green, the yellow, the red, the brown, all different ones. I don't like to do that because you could contaminate the isocrisis very easily. So. When I'm doing ISO crisis, I only do ISO. That's it, nothing else. When I mix my salt water, I only mix it at 1.023 because when you sterilize it, you boil it, some of it's gonna you know, decrease. You're gonna boil off that fresh water that's in there or the RODI that's in there. And so that'll typically bring it up to about 1025, 1026. I also use one air pump per vessel, as you've seen in the video. I've got a lot of different air pumps lined up in there in my little tent. Uh, that way, I don't want any kind of cross-contamination to go on per culture. If I have one air pump going for all the cultures, if one gets contaminated, you know, it could lead back to all the other cultures and then you lose all the cultures instead of just having one that's bad. You can also buy some pre-filters that go on the air pump and you put those on the airline and it doesn't let any kind of back flow of air go through it. 
it just lets the air pump push it and that's it. So you can add those. I haven't really looked into those, but that is one thing you can consider. Also, like I mentioned in the video, I like to take pictures every day of my culture. I start with day one, take a picture, day two, take a picture, all the way up until the day that I want to harvest. And that's typically day seven. So I'll have seven pictures and I can kind of look in each picture to see if it's gotten darker or, you know, just to kind of track the progress. And typically around day five or so, you won't see it, you won't see the final plankton get any darker. And that pretty much means that it's used up the most of the F2 that it's gonna use up and it's not gonna get any darker. And so I'll typically harvest around day seven. If there's any questions that you have or something I missed, go ahead and comment below and I'll help you out with anything you have. Or if you want a little bit of one-on-one -on -one time, then go ahead and join the membership and we'll set that up for you. And if you've already mastered culturing phytoplankton, your nanochloropsis, tetracelmus, isoprysis, all the other ones out there, and you want to learn how to culture copepods, go ahead and click the video that's on my face right now. I really hope that video will pop up because otherwise you're just staring at me, staring at the camera.